Hello everyone and welcome. Glad to be with you as we celebrate Christmas weekend. Hope you're all having a wonderful weekend and happy holidays. The Eagles back home after three straight road games, a first round bye in hand, and just one victory away from clinching home field advantage in the NFC playoffs. The Eagles of course host the Oakland Raiders on Monday night at Lincoln Financial Field. We've got a great show for you tonight. An inspiring story of a young man, Ben Hartranft, who's overcome some challenges in his life, and he's now an advocate for autism awareness. This is a story you won't want to miss. And we're going to go into the locker room. Players only. The Eagles glad to be back at Lincoln Financial Field this weekend, and they're very happy to be 12 and 2. We begin the show tonight with a look back at last week's wild and wacky game against the New York Giants. It's our Sounds of the Week, presented by Bose. Nothing comes between you and your music. Week 15 featured an NFC division matchup between the 11-2 Philadelphia Eagles and the 2-11 New York Giants. It seemed like an easy win on paper for the Eagles, but when you're playing a division rival, you can throw the records out. And he's in. He is. Ball is spotted, the kick is up, and it's blocked! So the Giants will have to settle for six points! Nick Foles led the offense onto the field, looking to even the score. Foles back again. Looking, he's looking, he is firing, and it is good. Alshon Jeffrey, touchdown. But the Eagles up by a point, they began to fall apart. Caught, touchdown. Down the sideline goes Shepard. Touchdown, Sterling Shepard. What has happened to this Eagles defense? But Eli had awoken the sleeping giant, and Ronald Darby was there to turn the momentum. Manning, back again. Manning stepping up, he has time, he fires, and it is intercepted, intercepted, it is Darby, a brilliant interception, and an even better run by Ronald Darby. Foles backs up, Foles looks, Foles fires, and it is caught, touchdown, Foles delivers to Ertz. The magic was back. With the offense and defense stepping up, it was time for the special teams to do the same. In the punt. Wing in the return. Barner. Wing gets it. It's blocked. It's blocked. And it was Camus Rouge Hill who blocked it. The tide had turned quickly, and the Eagles were about to take the lead for the first time in the game. Foles looking, firing, wide open. Touchdown! The Eagles opened up the half with a field goal from Jake Elliott, but looked to distance themselves from the Giants. Foles back. Foles look. Foles fires, and it is caught! Aguilar, touchdown! He went up and pulled it down! Oh, I love that! If the Giants were going to continue to make this a competitive game, they would need to show it now, and they did. Manning takes the snap, he looks, fires, and it is juggled and caught! And is he in? And so now they say he's in. With the Eagles leading by two points, the Giants again drove the field this time with a chance to take the lead. This is a 48-yard attempt to give the Giants the lead. Ball is spotted. The kick is away, and it's blocked. The Eagles got the ball back, and Jake Elliott put them up by five with under four minutes to play. The Giants made their way into the red zone, needing a touchdown to take the lead. It was all up to the Eagles' defense now. Manning takes the snap. He's back. He's looking. He is firing, and it is incomplete. It is out of the end zone, incomplete. And with that, the Eagles clinched a first round bye in the playoffs. Now a story to make you laugh, maybe to make you cry, certainly to inspire you. Ben Hartramp is a huge Eagles fan. He's the homecoming king at his high school, and he's an advocate for autism awareness. He is the subject of this Road to Victory. Ben Hartramp lives his life on the autism spectrum. He's gone through life never shying away from that. In fact, he prides himself on it. But if you ever visited North Penn High School in suburban Philadelphia, you'd realize those students see Ben as he is, not how autism describes him to be. In a sense, he is the epitome of the Kerry Margot quote, autism can't define me, I define autism. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. 
so when Ben was about 18 months old, he was really late walking and he just didn't seem to be responding to his name. So we thought maybe it was a hearing issue. So we took him to the doctors and they tested his hearing and told us it was perfectly fine. So you're relieved, you're like, okay, great. But nobody ever said, hey, maybe you should look at something else. Like there's some reason why this child's not responding to his name. And so when he was about two, just didn't have enough words. A typical two-year-old should have about 200 words in their vocabulary, and he had 20. So one day at work, I was standing there, and a speech therapist was standing next to me, and I said to her, do you do speech therapy here? And she asked why, and when I told her, she said, oh, no, no, you have to talk to the IU, the intermediate unit. So it opened a whole new world of places we never heard of, acronyms we weren't familiar with, um, and they came out and evaluated him, and that's where we first started on the journey to the diagnosis with autism. I was gonna cry. I mean, I really was. I, I, I just had this overwhelming feeling that, what does this mean? I, I just remember going to our church and talking to our pastor. He, he said, hey, we'll work through it with you guys. We'll be there with you. I remember talking to my dad. I was actually scared to talk to my dad because you know, he's, he's looking for perfect grandchildren and stuff. And he's like, oh, don't worry about it. We'll be there with you. After his diagnosis and through about three and a half years old, Ben was only saying single words. The family took the next step in Ben's development when they brought him to a speech therapist. We finally got our first session with Miss Paula and she sat him down and had a game that was so rewarding to him that he wanted to make these little animals make their sounds, but he wasn't allowed to touch it until he said, I want and the word. And that was so motivating for him that he did it. And at the end of that se session, he was saying, I want cookie instead of just cookie. And that broke it open for him. I mean, there was years of therapy on top of that, but it was like, okay, he can learn. And you're happy and you know, take the face to show As he grew through the years, Ben's personality began to flourish through school activities and their church program. We got involved with Calvary Church on Wednesday nights. They have just a wonderful youth group kind of opportunity for kids from 13 to 21. And they're all just have different kinds of disabilities. And then the typical teens serve in that ministry. So there's just all this inclusiveness and buddy programs going on, and he just adored that. It's amazing because Lori, Miss Lori Lehman pours out her spirit and what God has done with her in, in, in her life. And it's amazing to see how this how this ministry has grown every every time when we pick up people who don't normally go to church, we just pick them up and we take them up there. And they love it, and I love it too, and I just love going there. Ben was becoming very successful socially, but as high school arrived, no one knew if other students would accept him. When I walked into my sophomore year, I already know what it was gonna be like. And I've met so many new friends. I met a lot of the security guards. I know a lot of the football coaches and janitors. And even I have a bond with Gino. He's the maintenance guy at the school. He's really funny. So he is undoubtedly the most popular kid at North Bend High School. Uh, we have over 3,100 students, and I think every single student knows who Ben is. And it amazes me that he knows nearly everyone's name. He, he does everything from celebrating teachers' birthdays with surprise parties to telling me accomplishments of his peers. So he has this reputation around here of just being the most friendly uh, ambassador of North Penn School District and North Penn High School you could ever have. After making friends with his outgoing personality and cheery tone, Ben earned the nickname the Mayor of North Penn. Everyone knew Ben, and making friends came easily to him. It was his learning that struggled. That's where his teacher, Joseph Ionello, stepped in. I met Ben, I would say four years ago, the first year that I came to North Penn. I didn't have Ben in class. So last year, he pushed really hard for me to be his teacher, um, and I was lucky enough to get him. He comes to school in the morning for four periods a day, learning functional, real-world skills, so when he leaves here, he can be successful. And it's really personal for me, too, because my I'm, I'm one of eight kids, but my younger brother, who's the closest in age to me, is handicapped, and his teachers were able to make a huge difference with him, um, where he's able to live independently now. It's like the perfect job for me. With his senior year approaching, his friends nominated him for homecoming king. Ben was ecstatic, but those who cared for him worried about the process and the impact it might have on him if he lost. Initially, I'm like, are you sure? <laughs> you got 3,000 students in, uh, in North Penn, 1,000 
seniors who could, who could run for it. And then I, I started thinking, why not? Walking down the hallway and stuff, I would see him thanking people for, for, uh, for nominating him, and I would be behind him saying, make sure you vote for him, and he would almost get embarrassed by that because he doesn't want to, you know, he doesn't want to make people feel uncomfortable, but I would be the one saying, make sure you vote for him. And then I know the football coach, Coach Beck, he put in the countywide newspaper. I hope we get the win on Friday night, and I also hope that Ben wins homecoming king. So, uh, you know, I, f I feel bad for some of the other people running for him because I don't think anyone, <laughs> I don't think anyone really had a chance. I mean, I don't think anybody would have voted for anybody else. In fact, a lot of the people that were on the court were telling everybody, vote for Ben. They knew he would represent North Penn the way they wanted North Penn to be represented. I was on the field with my fingers crossed. They announced the first runner up, the second runner up. And now, the homecoming king of 2016 is... He was just like this on the field. You know, I could see him and they announced his name and he just took off running. And we just started crying because it was such an honor. Mr. Ben Hartraff. It wasn't a pity vote. It wasn't like, oh, let's get Ben. They really wanted him to have that honor. He won in the landslide. Wasn't even close. That's how much respect he has of his peers, the teachers, everybody. We get a large student contingency at our football games, but this was unlike any I'd ever seen. And um, they waited for the moment when they, the homecoming queen was, it was exciting and she was well deserving. Um, but everybody was really excited to hear who Homecoming King was going to be because it was a man. It made me cry and it made me so happy. We would have never imagined that. Our two older boys were saying, oh, we're not sure if he's going to do good in high school because they, they experienced it a different way. He's just so friendly that everybody accepted him there and I didn't have to sit here and worry, okay, what's going to happen in high school? I mean, you couldn't ha help but just you know, be happy for him. His reaction was so uh, genuine and authentic. Um, you, could, you can watch it now and still kind of get chills and goosebumps and stuff. And it's kind of like the reason you get, for me, like the reason you get involved. And uh, it, it was awesome. Like just talking about it now, it's kind of getting you a little emotional and stuff. It was awesome. Being the North Penn homecoming king was a great honor, but his goals in life far exceed that. He's an advocate for people with autism from volunteering at the Philadelphia Eagles Huddle Up for Autism to helping his fellow classmates, Ben's greatest gift is his selflessness. He's done a number of fundraisers to raise money for autism. And uh, one day at work, he got a, a pretty generous tip and he came right home and said, I'm putting it in the envelope for the autism. So it, like, just it's selfless. Like anybody else would be like, yay, extra money for me. And now it went right in the money for the donations. It's been awesome because we have other students on the spectrum in our classroom and they see how he interacts and he likes to talk about having autism and how autism isn't a bad thing. It just means things are a little different for him and you can see the impact he's had on other students with autism and being more confident and being more outspoken. It's pretty awesome to watch. I want to challenge other people to, I want to raise more money for autism. I want to help people understand more about autism. Having autism isn't a bad thing. We should be blessed with people with autism because some people with autism are smart and we need to think, how can we help people with autism? I hope he continues on his mission of advocating for students with autism and any students with special needs. Um, he's just a humanitarian. You know, he's just a good person that cares about people and wants to help others. He wants to make everybody's day better all the time. I hope he finds a pursuit that allows him to do that, and I'm sure he will. I, I suspect that not only are we not done hearing from Ben here at Lincoln High School, but I think our area and perhaps the country is not done hearing about Ben. So I think his, his future holds some pretty cool stuff, and I'm excited to see what he has in store for all of us. An NFL season is a long, exhausting grind. But as we find out each week in Players Only, there's also some time for fun. Now it's time to go into the locker room with the Philadelphia Eagles. Ho, oh, oh, ho, hello, everybody. We have two returning guests here, Mac Hollins and Kamu Gruger hill Yep, yep. And uh, today we're going to play Two Truths and a Lie, very popular game in college and high school. Have you guys played before? Yes. Yeah. Do you know the rules? Yes. So I got five different guys on here. Um, I'll be keeping score, and I think it's going to be a very thrilling match. So, all right, it's by the lie. Which of the following three facts is untrue about the following players? 
First up, we got Brent Seller, one of my favorite guys in the squad. A, he was not invited to the NFL Combine. B, his first job was a janitor. Or C, was a childhood model for a local children's store. Ready? Yep. All right, what do we got? You guys are both wrong. Damn! Selleck was not indeed oh, a childhood the model go, huh? for the local children's store. Um, all right, next up, Jalen Mills. <sighs> Finding Nemo is one of his favorite movies. His favorite meal is meatloaf. Or his first jersey was Allen Iverson. We're writing it out. Just write a letter, bro. Good work, boys. You both got that right. For the third question, Chris Long <clears throat> was drafted first overall in 2008. Had his first sack in the NFL against Eli Manning. He's had three sacks in a game three different times. I know Chris, and I think he's going with a quick uh, trick question, and that's the wrong year. Okay. It's not the wrong year. Uh, what do you have? A, what do you have? Oh my God. Second overall, not first. I'm going to award a bonus Thank half you. a point to Mac. Thank you, because I know my guys. You're not winning by point five. Oh, 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 oh. You know what? I'm going to make this question worth two points. All right. It's not going to make a difference. That's two up. points for this question. <laughs> uh, this is for Lane Johnson. His first job was a grave digger. B, his mother is a social worker for death row inmates. Or C, his high school graduating class had just over 3,000 students. You guys are both wrong. Oh, yes! My God. Woo! Uh, his high school only had 35 students. All right, no, we're going, we're not doing no point half. So that oh, means that tie break. Back. We have a tiebreaker. We have a tiebreaker. Thank you. Not, you, can't, you can't just make points. Back. Yeah, he can't. Oh. He's the boss. Some memorable moments in this Eagles Raiders rivalry, one that we'll explore when we come back to Inside the Eagles. A game against Oakland at Lincoln Financial Field. Brian Westbrook, the star. Marilyn Mike on the other side with our old school All-22. Hi everyone, I'm Merrill Reese, along with Mike Quick, and welcome to Old School All-22. A look back at a, a memorable game in Eagles history, and this one occurred against the Oakland Raiders, who they used to brag about being the most successful franchise ever. Well, they weren't. The Eagles let them have it, and the great Brian Westbrook figured into a key role. Well, Brian Westbrook was really phenomenal in this particular football game. Let's take a look. Up by a field goal late in the third quarter, the Eagles had the ball third and one from their own 20 yard line. Westbrook lined up in an offset in the backfield next to fullback Josh Perry and wide receiver Terrell Owens lined up as a wing to the left. Just before the snap, Donovan McNabb bought Owens in motion from the left to the right and Owens was going to run a deep post route. Westbrook, after a play action fake to Perry, would run a wheel route down the sideline. This post wheel combination is a great way to get Westbrook out in space. And thanks to that route from Owens, the linebacker matched up against Westbrook would have a bit of traffic to worry about in coverage. Westbrook blows by the linebacker and McNabb delivers a beautiful pass downfield, hitting Westbrook for a 62-yard catch and run. Just a couple of plays later, Westbrook would catch a shovel pass and waltz into the end zone to make it 2010 Philadelphia Eagles. Inside the Eagles is brought to you by McDonald's, I'm loving it, and by AAA, the right call for every drive. Visit AAA.com today. Once upon a time, defensive end Vinnie Curry was just like you, a huge Eagles fan. Now he's a big part of this Eagles defense, and he's this week's subject in our Ask an Eagle, presented by Geico. At Nelson10 asks, who was your favorite current WWE superstar? Who was your favorite all-time WWE superstar? Well, Nelson, I will have to say, current favorite, Roman Reigns. And of all time, I will have to say, the nature boy. So there are three goals in a regular season. One, win the division, check. Two, get a first round bye, check. Three, get home field advantage in the playoffs. The Eagles just one win away from doing that. They play the Oakland Raiders at home on Monday night with a lot at stake. We thank you for joining us on Inside the Eagles. We'll see you next week. And in the meantime, have yourselves a great Eagles day.